Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here. Welcome to Atlanta Business Radio, and thank you, OnPay, for supporting the show. If you need help with your payroll, go to OnPay.com and get your first month free. Today's show is going to be a good one. I got with me Tom Laswell, and he is with a company called Aventus Systems. Welcome, Tom. Hi. How are you guys today? We are doing great. But before we get too far into things, tell us about Aventus. How are you serving folks? Sure. Um, so Aventus Systems uh, was started in 2008. And basically since then, we've really built a market around reselling hardware, uh, laptops, monitors, um, servers, everything like that. Um, and about three years ago, we transitioned into the managed services model. So um, not only do we just do um, servers and, and desktops and laptops, but now we also support um, and manage small to medium sized businesses. Um, and have created a new product around that um, called Cortavo uh, that also uh, is an all-inclusive IT offering. And we'll get into a little bit of that um, as we go into this. Yeah. Well, tell us about Cortavo. How is that helping uh, firms? Sure. Um, Cortavo, and and I talk about all-inclusive IT, right? Most managed services out there um, specialize in one specific part of what people do in managed services. So when you think about um, going out and getting a new contract and looking for somebody to help you support your IT. Usually they do something like help desk or they'll do, you know, your backend servers or they'll do, um, you know, just small pieces of it. And the reason why we talk about Cortavo being all inclusive is it includes literally everything, right? So because we're uh, built on a company that has the hardware and the supply chain and everything around uh, supporting the desktops and laptops, and we also have our own server environment, um, we basically include everything in one um, specific low price um, uh, per end user. So we're not trying to, to nickel and dime. We're not trying to say, you know, you've got you know five servers out there and we've got six end users and we're going to try and figure out all that. Um, essentially, at the end of it, um, it's just that one end user fee. And then that includes everything from your desktop to monitors to internet connectivity to email address. Um, also, you know, any backend servers that you need. Uh, so it's really that, that high uh, touch, all inclusive IT support, which is very different from what um, you would typically get with the managed services offering. Right. Now, in a lot of the competitors, I would imagine they, they get you in on some kind of little maybe small project or small fee for some service. And then all of a sudden the creep comes in and then it's, uh, it, here's another fee here. Here's another fee there. Oh, you want that too? Here's another fee. And it just, before you know it, it's kind of out of control. Is that what you're trying to kind of fight against and try to help the small to mid-sized business owner kind of manage? Right, exactly. And, um, you know, that that's a great point, right, is that you'll start out with something small, right? I need, you know, just help managing uh, the fact that I have printers and things like that. And then that that creep becomes so powerful toward, towards the end of your bill that you don't have any idea what you're going to be paying from month to month. Um, and that's really what we've we've come up with Cortavo for is that it's it's that that single fee, right? There's no hidden costs. There's no added extras, right? There's no project fees. We help with literally everything. Um, and then we also give, you know, that peace of mind of not just doing help desk support and desktops and those kind of things, but we also give um, an advisory service as part of that. So we meet with everybody monthly. We look over their roadmap of what technology can do to help them rather than just being a burden and something that they have to pay for every month. So it sounds like you're trying to elevate to maybe a, a trusted advisor, or almost their partner in this, where they don't have to worry about the tech as much and they got somebody watching their back. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And the, that's that's probably the hardest thing for companies, especially small and, and medium sized companies, is that there are so many options out there um, in terms of how they can run their business. Right. If you search CRM on, on Google, you'll get like 18,000 results of different companies that are out there. Right. And that trusted advisor really helps them um, move into a technology world 
um, that they can be comfortable in and actually still consider running their business rather than trying to run, um, you know, their IT department as well. Now, since you're focused on small to uh, medium sized businesses, uh, what challenges do you see them having now that a lot of businesses have moved to more of a remote kind of environment and that might be new to them? Uh, a lot of these companies this is the first time that all their their workers and clients are all, you know, virtual. It's not like they're seeing them face to face. Right. We're, we're definitely in, you know, what everybody's calling the new norm, right, um, of remote working. Uh, a lot of people, especially small to medium sized companies, have used to go into an office, right? Um, everybody's in uh, a single place. Networking and security is all there because you're in a single place, right? So remote working has brought in a whole number of different challenges um, in terms of where people's data is. Um, you know, a lot of small companies, they use a file server that sits in an office somewhere. Um, and that file server, in order to access it, right, they've got to be on their network. So people bring in things like VPNs, um, where they can remotely connect into their networks. But when you talk about remote work, it becomes very difficult to keep that security aspect of it. Um, things like remote workers bringing their own computers, um, connecting up into a VPN is actually a really bad thing to do, right? Because that computer now is attached to their network and all of the same things that apply, right, with malware and viruses and all those kind of things are still out there. And when you've connected a, a random device into your network now, um, that opens up all of those security holes again. So those are the, the big challenges of people moving to the remote workplace have, have to do a lot with um, not thinking about the implications and then not thinking about how people can access their data and make sure that, you know, the files that they work on on a day to day basis are still there um, and still being able to access. Now I've recently had uh, the opportunity to interview somebody in the medical field there. Uh, they were orthopedic surgeon and a lot of their business was elective surgery and all that was paused. So they said, you know what, we're going to try to do some, telemedicine and open up and do some of these kind of checkups, or at least if you have a problem to call and then they'll do a video chat with you. This is the first time they've done something to this extent. Is this somewhere that they could, if they were working with you, you could really help them think through the best way to execute on something like that? Right. Yeah. It, that That's actually one of the, the coolest things that have come out of um, this whole thing that's happening right now, right? Is the fact that the technology um, has has increased so greatly for some of these these areas of medicine, um, telemedicine has been around forever, right? But um, doctors have not really used it because they they want to see their patients in person. They want to do these kind of things. So, I, you know, looking at companies that are um, embracing things like telemedicine um, and then using a service like us to help make sure that they have the right internet connections, they have the right um, security that goes along with it. Um, that they have the right, you know, equipment to even be able to to look at at somebody on the other end of the screen and and be able to diagnose them um, is a huge uh, piece of what what we can help with. So, do you uh, work a lot with uh, medical? Is that one of the so verticals our, you work in? Yeah, we we do have a, a couple of um, companies that we work with that are in the medical field as well, um, but we're pretty much um, vertical agnostic meaning that we help support companies across every vertical that you can think of. So from construction to, um, you know, insurance offices to, uh, you know, remote uh, medical workers. We've got a lot of staffing companies that we work with as well. Um, and those, those businesses are the, are the ones that tend to have um, employee, I hate to say this, employee turnover, right? So one of the, the pieces that makes our experience so, so good is the new user onboarding experience and then also the data integrity and, and offboarding experience. So, um, you know, looking at, at companies like, you know, a telemedicine company, um, they, they would have specific needs that, that we would go through during an onboarding process and try and figure out and make sure their home internet is good, make sure that, right, the, the things that they need to do their job is, is all set up and, and ready to go for them. Now, um, is there any kind of advice you can give that small to mid-sized business that if they are going to transition to this uh, remote environment with their people, is there some kind of do's and don'ts? 
Yeah, I would say the, the, the first don't, right, is not just open up your network um, to a VPN connection, right, is, is take that time and make sure that you're not just giving out those credentials and those passwords to be able to join people onto your network. Make sure that you're you're taking that time to, to have antivirus, make sure that, you know, the computers that they're connecting with are semi-secure or, or secured, right? Um, and then a do is look at services like uh, Microsoft 365, right? So with our Cortava solution, we use Microsoft 365 uh, to sync basically everything from the laptop into uh, OneDrive and the Microsoft Cloud, right? So their data and everything no longer just exists on the laptop. Those backups and everything are done on a uh, continuous basis. So every time you save something to your machine, it gets seamlessly uploaded to the Microsoft Cloud. Um, and that keeps all your files and everything in a remote world, right? Secure, uh, accessible, right? If a laptop gets lost, because now we, we work in a, an environment that's not secured by an office, right? So, um, looking at those as dues is get yourself into a Microsoft plan or, you know, a Google plan, um, get your data backed up into one of those cloud environments, and then everybody can start collaborating in your environment as well. So there's features that come with that, that, that allow you to, let's say, open a Word document. Um, and in that Word document, if you're working in a OneDrive space, um, and two people are working that document, you can actually see them um, typing. You can see where they're at, they see where they're looking at. Um, and it really makes for remote work to, to feel a lot more like you're working back in a team rather than by yourself. Now, what about this, um, like the Zoom calls and these video chats and video calls um, that require so much bandwidth? Do you help, like if I, if I have a remote team, can you tell, okay, you're going to need an upgrade of your internet here or you're not, or you're in a bad, you know, it's going to be harder for you to get video reliably. Like, can you help in that regard as well? Right. Um, because of the, the way we have remote agents. Um, so every machine that we manage has an agent that runs on it. Um, and it gives us a lot of information about that machine. And one of them is the internet connectivity that you have, right? So we can tell whether there's, constraints, um, you know, and, and then looking at Zoom is a, is a great, you know, example of people um, historically have not worked in such forces remote, right? So the internet connectivity in, in most people's environments at home are very different from what they're used to at the office. Um, and then, you know, Comcast, AT&T, and, the, and, you know, the big home players have had real issues um, at the very beginning of this, keeping bandwidth alive, right? Um, and we've seen, you know, great strides in, the, in what they've done with neighborhoods and making sure that they can get connectivity. But that is definitely one of the things, right, that we would recommend um, to our customers that um, when they are working remote, that we take a look at what internet connectivity they have at home um, and whether we need to upgrade that connectivity. Now, is it something that because everybody's at home, like they got kids, the kids could be gaming, the kids could be, you know, watching Netflix, there could be lots of strain on their uh, internet, and the internet was meant for a home use, you know, it wasn't meant for, right. you know, a two hour, you know, global conversation uh, that some people are having on video now. Are, is there any tweaks that you can suggest for, you know, people that are sharing their home internet with, you know, b a bunch of kids? Right. Yeah. And there, there are a lot of um, different types of home devices and, you know, routers and things like that, um, that, that have controls in them. And it all depends on, on what vendor you're using, but a lot of them have the ability to now go in there um, and look at your, your settings and say, I want to prioritize different traffic. Um, and then you can, you know, specify URLs most of the time and say, I want to say that stuff that's going to zoom, I want to make sure that goes to zoom. Um, but it is a lot more complicated than just going in there and clicking a couple of buttons. Um, so that is definitely one of the areas that, that we would help our, our home users um, through and, and set up their internet connections properly. Um, the, the other things are, right, if you're in an environment where you just have, you know, a regular modem and, and it's provided by your, your ISP, the best way to do is just if you're having an important call, Right. Turn off all the TVs and make sure that, that uh, Netflix isn't isn't running. <laughs> <laughs> but 
because that's a real issue, right? The there's only so much bandwidth that's coming into your house. Mm hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing an article um, a couple of weeks back that said Netflix has stopped streaming the ultra high definition um, because of the fact that the Internet slowed down from everybody all of a sudden working from home. Because if you think about it, when you're at home, sometimes you'll just have Netflix running in the background, right? Mm-hmm. You don't think about the implications that, that that makes on on your work environment. So now and the overall Internet, right? Right. <laughs> I, I mean, because the your home environment wasn't made for you know it could be two adults uh working and a kid that's in college doing online classes and another kid that's Mm -hmm. you know playing a video game like right that's not what your home environment was supposed to be (laughs) right and then you look at home internet and it's more of a shared mentality right so I, i i i hate to go back to it but the dsl days right when everybody got home um, and people that remember those those times, right, uh, the Internet would slow down. Well, the same thing happened, right, when all of a sudden the entire workforce in the U.S. went remote. Those neighborhoods are not built to sustain, you know, that, that kind of bandwidth. Um, you know, you can get a one gig Internet connection from any one of the ISPs now. But that's not a guaranteed speed, right? So when you're in a shared neighborhood, you're dependent on all of the other people around you as well. So um, it's definitely one of those, those areas that people don't think about and haven't historically thought about because it's not really been an issue um, until, you know, all of a sudden the whole country is working from their, their offices at their home. <laughs> so now um, for Ventus, what is kind of the point of entry for you? Are people switching from their existing uh, service provider to you or, or are you kind of the first time they've ever used a service provider in this manner? So we, we have a, a number of different ways people come to, to reach us. Most of the time, um, the companies that we're working with have used a managed services provider in the past. Uh, but we just launched something that we call the work from home bundles. Um, and that's bringing a whole different aspect of uh, the, the people that are coming um, in to want to utilize our service. So when we look at Cortavo is, is the, the traditional managed services that we provide, um, that can range from probably about 80% of people that have already used a managed service provider in the past and they're just not getting what they need. Um, and the extra 20% is, is new companies that are coming up that, you know, have had historically maybe five to 10 employees, but are starting to grow in a sense of they don't want to continue to go into that consumer, you know, um, store and buy a consumer grade laptop. They need to start moving into the business world. Um, so we see uh, a good amount of people in that aspect. And those work from home bundles are now bringing in um, companies that are between one and five um, employees that really historically have never needed to have laptops. But then we now offer these short term contracts that are six months and a year to be able to to bring them online, get them into um, a secure environment using Microsoft uh, and then migrating all their data so that those things that I talked about earlier about collaboration and making sure all your data is secure. Um, we're doing these work from home bundles to, to enable people to be secure while they're working remote. And this is kind of a, uh, kind of a turnkey solution. Now they're going to get the laptop with the services and the ability to collaborate remotely. Like it's like kind of a, you know, work from home in a box kind of situation that you're offering. Exactly. Right. It's, it's everything that you need to work from home, including all the licensing that makes it so that you can work as a team. And then it's, so it's, it's it, absolutely office in a box. And then, and then it doesn't require kind of a long-term commitment. This is, it can be six months. It doesn't have to be like, now I'm tied to you for life. I can just do this and see if, what happens at the end of this pandemic. And then maybe I'll go back to the office and I won't need it anymore. Right, exactly. Yeah, and the, the long-term contracts, like our typical Cortavo solution is a 36-month contract, right? So the work-from-home bundles are really just to enable everybody um, to, to take those short-term commitments to make sure that, you know, we help um, the IT industry as a whole, right, and those businesses that are that are around us that, that need um, security and, and the peace of mind to be able to, to work from home and still operate their businesses properly. Good stuff. Well, that's a very generous offer on your part. And um, are you seeing a lot of success in that area right now? Yeah, there, there's a huge amount of uptick. You know, it's it's um, one of those areas where 
uh, it's really hard for people to judge where the next six months are going to be. So these short-term contracts really have a, a good um, feeling to them, right? Because it doesn't lock them into anything long-term. Um, and then they can be more um, secure and, and have all of those things that they need to run their business at home. Um, so we're, we're seeing a huge amount of, of traction uh, with these work from home bundles. Well, good stuff. If somebody wanted to learn more about uh, Aventus and this kind of, what do you call it? The Cortava work from home bundle. Uh, is there a website? Is there some information that uh, they can learn more about? Yeah, the uh, the website is eventussystems.com. Um, and then we have those work from home bundles featured on our main page. Um, so if they, they just browse to eventussystems.com um, and click um, on the banner that's scrolling on, on the page, they'll, they'll be able to get more information about those work from home bundles. Um, and then Cortavo.com is also our managed services offering. So that's a site that's dedicated to Cortavo. Um, and then um, that gives you all the information about our long-term um, contracts and everything. Well, Tom, thank you so much for sharing your story. And again, that's Aventis, A-B-E-N-T-I-S, systems.com. Uh, to learn more about that work at home, work from home bundle. Thank you again for sharing your story today, Tom. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. This is Lee Cantor for Atlanta Business Radio. And thanks again to OnPay for supporting us and making this show happen. And again, go to OnPay.com and get your first month of payroll for free from them. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com.